Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECM and WF extended model for today's second video. This is your 30 day slash 42, 42 day European outlook and I should get on with it for you in a moment. Just to say that first video release today was our 6am UK weather forecast. I've got 10 to 14 there coming up for you later on as well. Please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. Thank you so much it for supplying the charts. Well, thank you so much EC. So, uh, okay, let's start off then. Uh, we're going to begin with the um, week one. Mean cell pressure anomaly taken from the 11th to the 18th of September. So uh, this week that we are currently in has a ridge in the North Atlantic extending into northern parts of Europe with low pressure through the west and the southwest of Europe and a ridge over on the eastern side of the Mediterranean. 500 millibar height anomaly shows a trough of low pressure through the far western and northwestern side of Europe. However, much of Europe is being dominated by this ridge of high pressure across central and eastern regions that bring up the warmth from the south across much of Europe. And, of course, we've got a ridge in the uh, Atlantic as well. Temperature anomalies then look very warm across much of the continent uh, this week, significantly above average in France, low countries Germany, into Poland, and up into Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania, and even into the northwest of Russia as well. Three to six degrees above average with those temperature anomalies. The warmth does extend into southern parts of England and Wales, both for Scotland, Northern England and Ireland, actually a little bit cooler than average in the weekend, and also large portions of Spain and Portugal coming out a little bit on the cooler side as well. Over on the eastern side of the bed, a mix there, some of the Greek islands a little bit cooler than average, some of the Greek islands a little bit warmer than average, to the south of the Black Sea through into Turkey, looks a little bit cooler there, and through western and uh, southwestern parts of Russia also looking relatively cool. But much of Europe is actually uh, above average or significantly above average hot again. Precipitation-wise, we look like that. So wettest across these western, southwestern regions, particularly through Spain, Portugal, France, in towards southern parts of the UK, extending into the low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, and into Germany as well. East of that, we have a swathe of drier weather, especially focused on the central bowl of the bed, Corsica, Sardinia, Sardinia, Italy, over the age assets of the Balkans, and then northwards up towards the Ukraine, looking generally drier than normal in that swathe. It does get a little bit wetter, though, in eastern portions of Ukraine and towards the uh, Black Sea. North of that, into Scandinavia, we see a mix of weather as well. So generally, uh, it's quite dry through uh, Denmark and southern parts of Sweden. A little bit wetter through uh, southern parts of Norway. Then it goes drier again through central parts of Norway and Sweden before we run back into wetter conditions around Finland. We're going southwards into some of the Baltic Sea states. So a lot of regional variation. But overall, looking wettest in the west and driest in the east with some ex. Exceptions. Week two will be the 18th, 25th of September. So next week is dominated by low pressure across much of Europe if the uh, EC extended is uh, correct there. Having a look at the uh, 500 millibar height anomalies. Again, we see that we've got a trough of low pressure into the west and the northwest of Europe. A ridge is through these eastern and also southern parts of Europe, the jet stream is doing something uh, a little bit like that. There is a blocking signal toward the Canadian side of Greenland in particular. <clears throat> Excuse me, the temperature anomaly then is uh, above average in many places with exceptions. So Spain, Portugal still looking rather cool. Ireland still looking rather cool as well. The hottest weather is over on the eastern side of Europe from Italy around the uh, Balkans in particular and go northwards into uh, western portions of Ukraine. There we have temperature anomalies of 3, 6 degrees above average. Widely, though, across Europe, we're seeing temperature anomalies of 1 to 3 degrees above normal, so significantly above average. Again, we see Scandinavia with a little bit of a mix of weather, so it's slightly cooler average in the far north, slightly warmer average across these far southern regions into the UK, a little bit above average for England and Wales, Ireland and Scotland coming out slightly uh, ab more average or slightly cooler than average. Again, it does 
overall looking a little bit on the cooler side for these western regions, far west regions, most parts of, uh, of, of the continent though, looking above average, anywhere from like eastern France and below countries eastwards looking warmer than average, and especially so Italy, Balkans, uh, to the Black Sea, that sort of area. And precipitation wise for week two, so it looks very wet in the uh, west of the northwest actually, so we've got the UK, Ireland, France, below countries, and much of Scandinavia coming out with uh, above average rainfall, quite significantly so in those deeper green shadings as well. So quite a wet week coming up next week, if that is correct. Some of this wetter weather does extend into far eastern portions of Europe as well. Down across southern Europe, it's looking uh, drier through there, again, especially across the central parts of, um, of the Mediterranean. So again, Corsica, Sardinia, Italy, towards Greece and Turkey, up to the Black Sea. You can drive a normal through those areas. Not a bad week for going on holiday to Greece or Turkey, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, week three will be the 25th of September to the 2nd of October. Still with uh, low pressure in the Atlantic, a little bit more towards the west of the UK and Ireland. Sign packs of some higher pressure starting to reach towards Spain and Portugal. Might be pulling up quite a warm southwest sea flow across northern western parts of Europe. There is some lower pressure over on the far eastern side of uh, Europe as well. The 500 millibar heights look like that. So below average heights in the Atlantic, above average heights should be southern, southwestern parts of Europe. And again, probably bringing in some sort of southwesterly type flow. Temperature normally is going widely above average across the whole of the continent, really. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, once again, got a little bit of a tickle tonight. So um, above average, the type of recording video, of course, you'll watch it in the morning. Um, so above average temperatures, both from uh, Ireland and Portugal in the far west, all the way over to uh, Western Russia and the Black Sea in the east. Um, and even those regions in Western Europe were, were a little bit cooler for each one or two. It looks like they're warming up as well as we go into the closing days of September. Precipitation looks like that. So the driest weather is across the southern and southwestern parts of Europe from Italy back towards Spain, Portugal and moving northwards in towards France. It's still rather wet though for Ireland and western portions of Britain. Um, then a weak seal but possibly hinting at still being a little bit on the west side through parts of Scandinavia and possibly into uh, Germany as well. But the signal as ever is weakening the further out we're going. Week four will be the second to the 9th of October. Very mysterious week this week so I'll just put in uh, a question mark because that doesn't tell us uh, very much. We'll have a look at the 500 Bilabar heights um so that's a rather strange anomaly it seems to get some high pressure within the northern latitudes interestingly in the north atlantic back towards iceland and scandinavia but also a ridge down towards spain so those two areas of high pressure are going to try to do different things the high pressure to the south is going to try to maintain those uh, warm possibly very warm southerly southwest is the high pressure to the north will be trying to pull down cooler or colder northerly or northeasterly winds. So that looks a little bit um, contrasting, to be honest. Temperature anomalies are slightly above average, not excessively warm, really, but still a little bit on the above average side. Um, no signal for those more northern and northeastern parts of Europe. And very weak signal for precipitation. It does look relatively dry, about high pressure down towards Spain and Portugal, though. Dry up towards Iceland, where we've got some high pressure. That's where the two highs are. One there, uh, one there. With a contrasting temperature, that could set up quite a wet pattern. So this area here might be subject to low pressure and train weather fronts. But I am sort of reaching a little bit for that because there's not much evidence within the data. OK, that's your uh, first day look ahead done, but let's go for weeks five and six uh, data before we go, because charts are there, so we might as well look at them. Uh, week five, be the night to the 16th of October. So uh, we get a trough of low pressure just to the east of the UK and Ireland. They could back pull in some cooler winds into northern and western parts of Europe. It is a weak signal, though. 500 millibar height show high pressure towards Greenland and also Canada and into western parts of Russia as well. Could there be a trough through here between the two ridges? Um, possibly, but again, the evidence is quite weak for that. The temperature on is just a little bit above average, near or just a little bit above average. Um, precipitation wise, just a little bit wet 
of these far northern parts of Europe. Again, quite a weak signal. And then lastly, week six will be the 16th to the 23rd of October with low pressure just out to our west. So we might be bringing the winds from off the Atlantic, then just out to west of the UK and Ireland, I should say. Uh, 500 millibar heights look like that. So some high pressure still towards France, Spain, Portugal. Quite a lot of high latitude high pressure, I have to say. So quite a strong signal of high pressure within the northern latitudes um, by the sixth week. And the temperature is just average to a little bit above across most parts of Europe, precipitation wise. Again, it does seem to be slightly on the wetter side, maybe through these northern. And Western parts Europe, but again, the signal is quite weak. Okay, so that's your 30-day European outlook done for this week. Um, remember, just a snapshot of what the model is showing. could look completely different when, when we look at it again um, next week, next Tuesday, for the European outlook. Of course, we will look at this model on Saturday morning with a UK and Ireland focus, and I'll be a little bit livelier on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect. So it's horses, of course, if you want sensible gaff with this model. It's Tuesday. If you want slightly giddy gaff with this model, it's a Saturday morning. Or maybe you like both. Who knows? Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Thank you so much. We're going to be back shortly with your 10 to 14 there, including all our regular features. Come back for that in a little bit for this one. No, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.